No matter who owns or runs uh, Twitter, uh, the president has long been concerned about the power of large social media platforms, uh, what they ha the power they have over our everyday lives, has long argued that tech platforms must be held accountable for the harms they cause. Uh, he's been a strong supporter of fundamental re reforms to achieve that goal, including reforms to Section 230, enacting antitrust reforms, requiring more transparency, and more. And he's encouraged uh, that uh, there's bipartisan interest in Congress. Okay. What's going on there? Well, pause for a moment. Let's go ahead and rewind before the whole Elon Musk Twitter thing. Joe Biden, Jen Psaki, lots of Democrats actually were out there a lot yelling at the big tech platforms, telling you need to do more. This is irresponsible. What's going on here? But why? I mean, you're not naive. You're not stupid. You understand all these big tech platforms, they're all communist, all of them. Someone did a chart yesterday on Twitter on their donations to political candidates, and I think the number was 99. If not, it was 98% of their political donations went to Democrats. They're, they're all in the tank for the Democratic Party. Well, why was he ever talking about reforming them? What, what are you talking about, Joe? Jen, what are you talking about? Well, that's the thing. That's the difference in the communist's mentality and your mentality and my mentality. And it's hard for us to understand. I've used this example before and it is 100% true. If you and me, if we got in a war with the communists, you and me were against the communists and the war is over 100 islands, just 100 equal sized islands in the ocean. And at the end of that war, they had one and we had 99 of them. We'd be doing backflips, right? <laughs> How about that? Look at that resounding victory. We crushed them. Hey, you suck, communists. Enjoy your island. Right? That's what we'd be doing. The communist doesn't think in this way. If the communist took 99 of those islands and we had won, the communist wouldn't take even a brief moment to celebrate. He would be bitter and angry and miserable about that one island he doesn't own. Oh, Joe Biden, Jen Psaki, all the rest of the communists in the government, they very much believe in reforming the social media companies, but not for free speech. They believe in bringing these companies to heel so they'll do even more on behalf of the Democratic Party. Keep in mind, when they talk about things like Facebook, they're angry because the conservatives have the biggest numbers on Facebook because we're the only interesting people out there. That's what they're mad about. They want these groups censored. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg for Facebook very likely had a heavy hand in <clears throat> helping Joe Biden win the last election. Spent hundreds of millions of dollars in swing districts and swing states where there turned out to be a, an unusual amount of voter, voter turnout. We'll just put it that way. I mean, Zuckerberg's his boy. And Zuckerberg's out there getting scolded by these people every day. Why? Because it's never enough for the communists. So yes, they're, they, they definitely believe in reforms for big tech. Not more free speech, though. They believe these people must be brought to heel. I mean, after all, if these people aren't brought to heel, somebody might spread pff, dangerous misinformation. That's the word, right? Misinformation like, oh, I don't know. The vaccine stops the spread of coronavirus. That'd be a dangerous thing to put out there, don't you think, when it's not true? Elizabeth Warren got in on it. Quote, the deal is dangerous for democracy and calling for a wealth tax to hold big tech firms accountable. Of course, dangerous for democracy. Democracy has officially become one of those words. The second you hear somebody say it, alarm bells need to be going off all around you at all times. But that's odd because remember the Romans and their different mobs? Well, Elizabeth Warren doesn't seem to have a problem with Jeff Bezos. You see, he's the second richest man in the world next to Elon Musk. He owns the Washington Post. He owns Amazon. He's deeply, deeply, deeply in bed with China. In fact, he's done things on behalf of China, nakedly on behalf of China. If there are negative comments about Xi Jinping in Amazon's comment section, whoop, no more comment section. But Elizabeth Warren isn't worried about that. Why? Well, she's in the other mob. We just have our mobs now. It's what we've become. 
And the craziest thing, one of the funniest things I saw yesterday and wildest things is it has long been known by people on the right that big tech companies like Twitter, they ban people on the right. They hardly ever ban anyone on the left. They'll censor people on the right and they'll throttle down the engagement for people on the right, for people who don't have Twitter. Just just know, I mean, I'm obviously fantastic on it. And if I put something up there that's very witty and they don't want it to get a lot of play, well, they'll just mess with their little computer thingies and make sure not very many people get to see it. And this has been known for years. In several circles, this has been known. This is just what they do. They shut up the right and amplify the left. And if you'd like to know what they've been doing, just listen to MSNBC's Ari Melber talk about what he's worried might be done to them. You own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates, all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else, and the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Elon Musk says this is all to help people because he is just a free speech, philosophically clear, open-minded helper. Oh, they might ban your candidates. They might throttle down your engagement. Oh, I hope he does. Look, these people, it is kind of terrifying when you pause and think about it. I mean, we're having fun, and I do have fun, but it is terrifying when you think about how adamant these people are against free speech. Keep in mind, while I love this move and I applaud him for it, Elon Musk isn't some bloodthirsty right-winger walking around with his pocket constitution in his hand. Elon Musk is from South Africa. He's got business in China. He's got all kinds of green movement stuff all over his resume. He just wants people to be able to speak freely. Why is that such a problem for America's Democratic Party? Brian Stelter, well, he's worried. People, people might think the party's dangerous. Look, who knows? I, I think that's a, a that's a that's a, a, an example of a broader question for Twitter, which is, if you uh, if you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party, or are you going to decide to stay home? And that's a question for Twitter users. Some Twitter users might love the idea that there's going to be absolutely no moderation and no rules at all. Others might not want to be anywhere near that. Am I am I crazy, Matt? No, no, you're right. And what what happens to the advertising? I mean, if there's no moderation or little moderation, do the right. advertisers stay away? What does that do to the, yeah. the business prospects for Twitter itself? Yeah, I'm sure Brian Stelter gets invited to a lot of cool parties. I mean, he's definitely the one I'd want there. By the way, a party with no rules sounds sweet. <laughs> All right. So how are they taking it in Twitter? Well, there were some leaks yesterday. Apparently they had a all-hands-on-deck meeting so the employees could vent their frustrations, and these are just delicious. Hang on to these. Quote, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I really don't want to work for a company that is owned by Elon Musk. Another said, I hate him. Why does he even want this? And perhaps the most revealing one was, we're just going to let everyone run amok? Nobody knows. Again, these employees of a social media platform, they think of themselves as communist warriors. They believe to their bones that it is their job, it is their duty before their communist god to shut you up. They can't comprehend the concept of letting people speak. That might be dangerous. Pretty revealing, right? Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History, The Forgotten Genocide, the first episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.